eyes shine, for the light has come. I'm Minister Michael Kernan, bringing to you a full gospel Christ teaching ministry, which is committed to the uncompromised word of God, allowing God's people to come out of darkness and into his marvelous light. But first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, open the ears of the people who are listening to this broadcast so that they might understand with their heart and be converted. And I pray against all hindering spirits that might try to prohibit this glorious gospel from being effectual, that it might go down in their heart. Hallelujah, and take root. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. This word needs to become real to you. That's the faith part. Hallelujah. When this word becomes real to you, then you will believe. Hallelujah. You will have faith in what Jesus Christ has done. Thank you, Jesus. Our subject today is the praise of man. The praise of man. You'll see how this works out. I had uh, First, I want to give you a, uh, um, a word from the Lord. He, uh, he came to me uh, April 9th. At 1, 1 a.m. in the morning, hallelujah, he, he comes when he pleases. He came to me, and I wrote it down. <coughs> I know this is God. When you disobey God, when you disobey God, you give opportunity to the devil. You give opportunity to the devil, and your prayers are hindered. You see there, he, he also added that on, and your prayers are hindered. We all want our prayers answered. But when we disobey God, and I'm not talking big things like uh, 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 the, the commandments seen in the Bible. I'm, I'm saying when God comes to you and you know God spoke to you and he goes, don't go here. Don't say this. Don't, you know, when you do that thing and it might seem small, don't go to town today. You know, you know what? That God's told you to do that. Get it done. It's a, it should be a small thing. But he's looking for. Thank you, Jesus, obedient children. And when God speaks to your heart and tells you to do something, he's doing it so he won't give the devil opportunity and that your prayers won't be hindered. Hallelujah. So when God told me, when, you're, when you disobey God, you give opportunity to the devil and your prayers are hindered. I know the devil didn't say this. I know God did say it because I know his word. When God speaks to you, how do you know the difference between the spirit of holiness and the spirit of this world? This word, when you read this word, you will become to understanding. You will come to a, a understanding with God. And you will, you, you'll know his person. You'll know his spirit. And you'll know he has only good intentions for you. Thank you, Jesus. He's not going to tell you to go out there and booger yourself up real good. Oh, you know your only flesh. You, God knows your only flesh. No, that's the spirit of the world. God's going to tell you stuff that you need to do that won't give opportunity to the devil, that will give opportunity so you can praise him. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to 1 Samuel 15, and we're going to look at the king, Saul, Israel's first king. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to look at 1 Samuel 15. I'm going to start at 10. I'm just going to start to read here. The more you read this word, the more you're going to understand God. And when he speaks to you, you're going to say, I know God said that to me. There's many times, like in, in my past, I wasn't sure if this person was of God or that person was of God. Because most, most times I, I, I heard God speak to me was through preachers on the TV or on radio. Now I know when somebody says something, I'm like, I know God said that. Hallelujah. That's the spirit of discernment. You can only get that with when Christ is in you. And you're going to go, I know God said that. Hallelujah. And the spirit is going to amen what just that preacher just said. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and had not perform my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a place, and has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. 
And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What mean the bleen of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the <coughs> oxen that which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Am Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest will we utterly destroy. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. And Saul said unto Samuel, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord had said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thy own sight, and was not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel, and the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go, and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them and, until they be consumed. Therefore, when then did thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord? And Samuel said unto Saul, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought up Agag, the king of Amalek, uh, of, of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. Now, I'm going to stop there because this next scripture is really important. Um, but if you, you, you read the whole 15th chapter, go ahead and read it for yourself. God told him exactly what he wanted him to do. And he, when he tells you to do something, again, when you disobey God, you give opportunity to the devil and your prayers are hindered. You know what? You're not honoring God when you disobey. Not only what he said, but what the spirit tells you to do. And he's looking out for your best interest. The devil does not have your best interest in mind. Not at heart, not in mind. I mean, he, he could care less. Matter of fact, he comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give life, and that more abundantly. So when we do what the word says, hallelujah, whether in spirit or written in the Bible, we are honoring God, and we cannot fail. We have a fail-proof system. Hallelujah. When you do what the Spirit tells you, when you do what the Word tells you, when you read it like it is, when you live it like it is, you're going to get and be where He is. Thank you, Jesus. My heart is already risen in the glory. He showed it to me in a vision. I'm in Him, and He's in me. I'm one with, my spirit, with the Spirit of my Father, my Heavenly Father, and I are one in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I'm in Him and He's in me. And everything that was in my heart before, before He started His work, He's taking one at a time. He's looking for obedience. When He tells you to give Him something, you need to give that thing up. It's a flaw in your character which is not like Him. And when He takes it from you, He will exalt you in the fruit of His Spirit. You know, I hear a lot of times these people crying on Christian radio stations and TV and, you know, oh, Lord, how long? You know what? You don't have to wait long at all. Just do what he says. And he'll work that good thing out in your heart. Now, Saul, I, I'm going to keep reading because there's some scripture coming up now. I just gave you a pretext to what's coming up. Saul did not do what God wanted him to do. And you might think it's a small thing. It's not a small thing. When God tells you to do something, the people of the land, it says, polluted the land. They also, uh, uh, you might think, well, you know, he, he, he killed all those people. He had them kill all those people. Well, they were already dead in the spirit. And God was trying to make a, 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 a peculiar people. Now, I'm not saying go out and murder people. Obviously, this was how God dealt with things back then. But he's... This is a shadow of things to come. When God tells you to do something and you don't do it, it's not going to work out. What he's working out in your life, what he's pulling out of your heart, things that are going on in your life aren't changing because you're not yielding to his spirit. Romans 8 and 14 says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see there? Jesus also said in the place, if you, why call me Lord and do not the things that I say? So we got to be obedient. 
Our obedience is what God needs from us. Hallelujah. He doesn't need me uh, 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 um, um, showing off, you know, uh, uh, singing and dancing and snotting all over myself. He needs obedient children simply allowing him to be Lord of their lives. And when this starts, this, this, this transformation starts to take form, you're going to see your whole outlook on life will change. Hallelujah. Let's go on. 1 Samuel 22. And Samuel said, had the Lord, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. Okay? That's a bad place to be. When God finally sees in you something that he can you're not yielding to him anymore. You're, you're in rebellion, and you're not going to listen to what he's telling you. That's a bad place to be. Let me go. Let me move on now. I was going to do this a little bit later, but go to, we're going to Acts 13. Now, Saul, who followed Saul, was King David. King David followed Saul, and God made a big deal out of King David back then and to this day. King David did what God wanted him to do. And when he messed up, he repented with godly sorrow. Those are the sure mercies of David. You want sure mercies. You're going to have mercy toward other people because mercy rejoices against judgment. Hallelujah. I taught that lesson a while back. Mercy rejoices against judgment. When you have mercy on those that aren't right, those that are right, you know what? Somebody might make you mad, and you know they're a child of God. You're going to have mercy on them, and you're just going to let it go. Hallelujah. God is pleased with that. He says, you're going to rejoice against the judgment. Hallelujah. Because you're right with God. When you have a heart of God, you're right with God. I'm telling you. And David had a heart. David was a man after God's own heart. That means he had a heart of God. He had a godly heart. Here he was, a warrior king, going out, killing entire armies, destroying entire armies. Now, I'm not into war, but I know the Old Testament is a picture. It's a negative of the picture that's to come. That's the life of Christ in me. I'm not to, I'm not to um, um, yield to the, to the spirits of this world, to the, to the, to the, to the things of this world. I want to, I, scriptures keep coming to me, so I want to stick with this one right now. The Acts, the Acts of the Apostles 13 and 21 and 22, and afterward, they desired a king. This is after they came out of bondage. They after, after they came out of Egypt. This is, he's talking about God's people. And if you're a child of God, you're one of God's people. You are Israel. Hallelujah. You, if you're a child of God, you are of Israel. Thank you, Jesus. And afterward, they desired a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years. Now, understand this. He gave 40 years. He gave Saul 40 years. This wasn't Saul's first mistake. I got many things to say on this subject. I hope to get them all in. But Saul had 40 years to get right with God before he was replaced, before God moved him out of the way. He said, you are in the way. I got another one now. I've raised up another one. Here's, here's an example. God's got a ministry for me somewhere. It's coming up. He showed, I got a ministry for you, and he's given me a pastor's heart. Listen to this. If I choose not to do that will, he will. Let me tell you something. God will find someone to take that ministry from me. Yes, he will. And he'll do it. He has no respect of persons. This, this could also be called no respect of persons, this teaching, the praise of men. You'll see how this works out. But God has no respect of persons. He moved Saul out of the way and put David in his place. Listen to this, 22 now. 
And when he had removed him, you see there, he removed him and raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. You want to please God, you're going to fulfill his will. That means you're going to obey when he talks to you. It might seem small, some little thing. It doesn't matter. At that point, he needs you to do that small little thing. Oh, that's insignificant. I'm too, I'm too big. My britches are too big to do that small little thing. Uh-uh. We, we start with small things, and then he works them up to us. Hallelujah. We work up into bigger and bigger things, but he needs obedient vessels. Just obedient vessels. That means you're available to do what he wants when he wants you to do it. And now this is 1 Samuel 15, 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now this is important. This, some of these, we just, we, we read past them. We do volume reading. We read, we read, we read, we read, and we skip over something like this. Listen to this. Did he repent? Did he, did, he, did, he, did he feel sorry? Yeah, but he feared the people. The praise, he feared the praises of men. If I don't do this thing that I know God told me not to do, I fear the people more than I fear God. Listen to that. I fear man more than I fear God. That's not going to work. I'm telling you right now, we got to obey God, even on the smallest little things. Because the small things, I know, just like a seed grows, when a seed grows, it springs up and this huge plant comes up and fruit is filled with more and more seeds. You can take all those fruit and have a harvest the next year off of one little seed that brings forth abundantly. So when we do something, our disobedient will grow in another area. I don't know how or why. Oh, it seems so insignificant. I do, it doesn't matter. God needs me to obey him. He needs you to obey him. And when you got the gumption to just want to go God's way, you know what? He's going to use you mightily. And if you start rebelling, I'm telling you, it's rebellion. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. You get calloused. You ever see a callous? I know my hands right now. I used to be a carpenter. I used to work in the fields, and I, I, I had to dig ditches and work in, as, and build houses, and I did all sorts of labor-intensive things. And after two weeks, those calluses would go away. And I would, and I would, if I got laid off for two weeks, I would have to come back, and those calluses would have to get built up. When you get callous toward God, you can't, you can't discern the Spirit. Good, you can't discern Him. You don't know right from wrong. You get to the point where you're going to believe every single lie told to you. We need to get to a point where we just flat out want to go God's way. And one of those ways to know God, hallelujah, is through his word. I'm going to go to um, Ephesians 4. I'm going to start at 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some preachers and, or pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. See, I am the body of Christ. If you believe in God and you call him Lord and Savior, you are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He wants us to become into the fullness of his Holy Spirit. In this present life, not, not somewhere yonder, right here, right now. That we henceforth, here we go, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness where they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. I'm telling you, 
I'm doing this not to be seen, not to be some kind of fella, not to, not to push my weight around. I'm doing this out of love because somebody had the gumption to talk to me, to convince me God can work this out in your life. Hallelujah. And we don't just go to God on the, uh, on the bad days. And then when the, the days are good, we go out and do our own thing. You know what? We follow God faithfully all the time. Luke 9 and 23 says, If any man will come after me, call himself a Christian. That's what that means to me. I'm just telling you my interpretation. When any man will come after me, you're going to call yourself a Christian. He needs to deny himself. That means my priorities are second to God's and to mankind even. Hallelujah. Paul said over and over, exalt your brother. You know, make sure he prospers and then you will prosper. Hallelujah. We're putting our, our, our others, uh, uh, um, 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 we're putting others' uh, uh, emphasis, we're putting emphasis on others instead of ourselves. Hallelujah. Because that's who we are now. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, deny self, Pick up his cross daily and follow me. Not an easy road, but a glorious one. When you get to the point when this man is dead, we, we talk about it all the time. We sing songs about it, and we hear a song. We got to die to the old man, and that is sinful flesh. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I can get it done. The word of God says, I can get it done. And we believe what God has said. We believe what God has spoken. And a man or woman of God comes to you and tells you, how to get it done, how to interpret the word. You know what? You do those things, and you will prosper in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Here's something I just learned the other day, and I, I, it never really dawned on me. You hear about the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the ones that were following God according to the law. The, the Sadducees were actually secular. They didn't believe in nothing but themselves. They didn't believe in the law of Moses. They, it says in the Bible they didn't believe in spirit or the resurrection. They only believed in <coughs> uh, 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 having a group of like-minded people coming together and, and convincing the Romans that they could control the people. They were Sadducees. They were, they, they were, they were, they were secular. They didn't believe in, in, the, in the gospel. They didn't believe, not in the gospel, they didn't believe in the law of Moses, they didn't believe in the prophets, they didn't believe in nothing that they couldn't see with their eyes, they were carnal. And they, they only believed in power and controlling mankind. They didn't believe in, in the judgment, they didn't believe in nothing. They mocked it. And that's just like a lot of so-called Christians today. We call ourselves a Christian nation, but yet we don't, you know, people that don't believe the literal interpretation of the gospel of Christ, they 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 go to they they'd rather go to an Easter egg hunt on Sunday morning on, on on Christmas excuse me on Easter than go hear from the preacher, you know what? And they call themselves a Christian. They actually Jesus said, if you're gonna f come after me, that means you're gonna call yourself a Christian. You got to do these three things, or there's no life in you. And Paul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. And Saul, excuse me, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy word, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. You see there? They had the praise of men and not the praise of God. He didn't fear God. He feared man. He was like, man, I want to be numero uno at the, at the, at the, at the country club. I want to be some kind of fella. I want to be a man about town. And that's just like it is now. People, I seen the other day, a rabbi on a, on a, on a, on a, uh, uh, it was a secular show. It was talking about mitzvahs and, 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 and uh, the Passover and all. They were, they were showing uh, the Easter side. They were showing the, um, the, um, the uh, Jewish side. And they were given equal time, which is fine with me. It's a secular program. They should be able to do it. Uh, uh, but the, the rabbi was apologizing, saying, well, you know, the, 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 uh, the, he's, he's talking about the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the walking through the Red Sea. And it was probably low tide, and this probably happened, and, and it was an example of this. He was apologizing for what God had wrote in his word. Hallelujah. And you know what? If 
them going through on high t or low tide was a miracle. How much of a miracle was it when the Egyptian army went through the same path and was overcome by the low tide? I don't think so. The most powerful army on the planet at that time was, I mean, was that not a miracle? If the one wasn't a miracle, surely the other one was. So they apologize. And, they, and they, they're weak need toward the word of God. We, we come to God and we, we hear what he says. I'm not ashamed of miracles. I'm not ashamed of my Lord and Savior. I'm not ashamed of his word. And I'm not going to say, well, it's, it was an example of this. And no, no. It says what it means. Let's keep going. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again to me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord had rejected thee from being king over Israel. Listen, Samuel's keep, he just, he's, he's going to keep coming. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get what, uh, 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 I mean, Saul doesn't get what Samuel is telling him. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he lo laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. He ripped his clothing. I mean, Saul was like, you, you're gonna, you, I'm, I'm the man here. I'm in charge. Here this is, the prophet Samuel. He grabbed a hold of his jacket and ripped it. And, his, and Samuel said unto him, The Lord had rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and had given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. And I've heard that before. God is not a man that he should repent. Will he not do what he says? When God says something in his word, he can get it done. Another, another way to say that, when God spoke it to you in the spirit or it is written in his word, he will get it done. And when you have faith in what he said, he will make it come to pass. Then he said, I have sinned. Honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me that I may worship thy, the Lord thy God. You see there? He wants to have the prophet honor him in front of the people again. He, he, does, he doesn't even care about the prophet. You know what? That prophet means nothing to the king at this point. He's like, you honor me now in front of the people so I can have honor of men. But it keeps going. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then said Saul, then said Samuel, bring hither the, unto me Agate, the king of the Amalekites. And Agate said unto him, came unto him delicately. And Agate said, surely the bitterness of death is past. And I, I'm not going to keep going here, but... You're going to see that Samuel, Samuel did what God wanted him to do. But the whole time, he gave Saul 40 years to repent. He gave Saul 40 years to repent. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to, I'm going to skip over real quick. 2 Samuel, uh, excuse me, 1 Samuel 16 and, and 6 and 7. And it came to pass, see now, I, I'm, I'm going to jump down here first. I'm going to start at 1. God already made preparations. He already had a person in mind to replace Saul. At this point, this was the last straw. Saul had 40 years. To, I don't know exactly what part of the 40 years this This could be 36th year. This could be the 38th year. But you know what? God got to a point where he just said, that's it. That's it. You're done, Saul. I'm, I'm, I'm done. And you can see his attitude here. He didn't even respect God's spokesman. He didn't respect God's word. He was, he, he was, the, the word was going in one ear and coming out the other. He might as well put his fingers in his ear and said, la, 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 la. That doesn't work with God. I'm telling you, when God says something, he means it. And when you perform the doing of it, he will honor you with that performance of that thing that you have done. You've obeyed him, and he's going to honor you as a child now. And, and, and we've seen from David a repentant heart, a, God, a, God, a godly sorrow heart, a heart of godly sorrow. When you mess up, God will bless you. Hallelujah. He will forgive you, and he will bring you around because we need time to be holy. In the New Testament, we need time to be holy. We've got to allow God to get that work done in our heart. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord said unto Samuel, 
verse 1, chapter 16, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Saul said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Get this. Saul would have killed the prophet Samuel. If he heard, this is what was in Saul's heart. He did not respect God at all. He, he respected man more than he respected God's prophet. Now, David, on the other hand, when Nathan came to him and said, you're the man, King David whipped bitterly. It says he just broke down and he started crying. And he said, forgive me, Lord, I have sinned. And if you go to Psalm 51, and he said, no, 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 I didn't sin against man. I sinned in your sight. Let's go there real quick. Um. I'm going to go to Psalm 51. Verse 4. Psalm 51, verse 4, Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speak, and be clear when thou judges. What does that mean? To be justified when thou speaks? God is not partial. He does not have respect for person. God cannot have respect for person. He cannot respect your person. It says it in the Old Testament. It says it in the New Testament. God has no respect of persons. So if God is going to be just and the justifier of everyone that he brings out of this world, he has to treat one person equally with the other. There has to be justice with God. That's what he's saying. Against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. David is saying, I didn't sin against man. I sinned against you, God. This is between me and God. Samuel, he had... Uh, Saul had no respect with Samuel at all. And matter of fact, Samuel said, Saul will kill me if he hears of this. Now, we're going to verse 6 and 7. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. He was, he, he was, he was the most, uh, uh, um, um, he was the eldest. And, and he was the oldest at that time. But the Lord looked. But, but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor in the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man seeth on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. This is an inside job of the heart. God looks at your heart. Now, I'm going to uh, St. John. St. John, I'm going to 12. St. John 12, I'm going to start at 37, and you're going to see here, uh, 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 the praise of men is not what God's looking for. He's looking for you to praise him, and the only way we can praise God is to do what he says. We, we, we have no other praise of God. We have no other uh, uh, God praising. It means he's, he's honoring us. He's calling us his children. Hallelujah. Listen to this. But though... Though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, God's own people, Israel, not all of them. Uh, obviously, Paul was a Pharisee, and he came out. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who had believed our report, and to whom had the arm of the Lord been revealed. Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, he had blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes, neither understand with their hearts and be converted, and I should heal them. These things Isaiah spake when he saw his glory and spake of him. Let, here's the two I wanted to get to. 42 and 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. You see there? 
But because of the Pharisees, they would not confess him. At least they should put them out of the synagogue. Here's why. For they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. They want to be part of the clique. You know what? I, got a, I, got a, I, I heard a saying, and I, I, I say this a lot. If you've heard it a lot of times, uh, forgive me, but I, I, I have a saying that I hear a lot. I, I mean, I've heard in the past. Uh, two, uh, actually, it's been quite a while now. It's probably been four years now ago. When we were 20, we were worried with what the world thought of us. By the time we become 50, we realize that the world wasn't thinking about us at all. I I, I'm going to say it like this. You just got to get over your funky self. You got to get over the fact that the world doesn't love you no more. You just got to get over the fact that this world just doesn't love me no more. But God does. You got to come to a place where you meet God halfway and say, Lord, I believe you. And you know what? He's going to he's he's going he's going to work Let's this nature right out now. in your heart now because you don't care what man thinks of you. I see a lot of these on, on usually on the history channels and and on secular shows. They got these preachers and I was talking about a rabbi, but I see preachers that call themselves uh, uh, ministers of of, of, of the Christian faith, they got their little collar turned right. around backwards and, and oh, yeah. doubt. And all they preach is doubt. They don't preach faith. They don't preach the word. They preach doubt. And oh, and, and they were handpicked by people, uh, uh, secular people that wanted a, a man of doubt to come and, and doubt the existence of God himself. And they're like, oh, this doesn't mean that. And, then, and they're still looking for Jesus' body. In the, in the desert. Oh, right and it now. says yeah. clearly in the Bible he is risen. You know what? You're either going to believe what the word says or you're going to believe what man says. And you're going to seek the praises of men, which will not work in the sight of God. It will not work in sight. Now, he'll have mercy on you. He will have mercy on you. We're going to John. St. John 21. I got on my feet. He will have mercy on you. Case in point, right here. Thank you, Jesus. Case in point, God will have mercy on you. St. John 21, I'm going to start at 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto yeah. Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, love thou me more than these? It's a question. Love thou me more than these? And he said unto him, you know, he didn't, he, he didn't actually hear what Jesus said. He was just going, you know, uh, uh, this is what I think he wants to say. And he just, you know, word comes in, word goes out. You know what? It's got to go down yeah. into your heart, and you've got to meditate on it. Yeah, when you read this word, you can't just blast through it. You've got to see what it's saying um, and understand it with your heart. It, it says you've got to repent with your heart and be converted. And you can only be converted when you meditate on what God is saying. And then do it. you got to live what he's saying. Listen to this. So when they yeah. had dined, the Last Supper. Actually, this is after the Last Supper. So when they yeah. had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, this is after the resurrection. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon yeah. Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me more than these. And he said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knows that I love thee. And he yeah, said unto sure, him, feed my lambs. Right. A commandment. you got to do what God says. He said unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me. And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knows that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed yeah. my sheep. <laughs> and he said unto him the third time, Simon, yeah, son know, of Jonas, love thou me. Simon was, was grieved because he said unto him the third well, time, Love thou me. And he said unto him, like Lord, thou knows that all things. You know all things. So you know that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Good. Do I got it down? Yeah, I got it down. So I'm, I'm coming up to another scripture. I but right. I want to I complete this first. Love thou me more than these. Jesus said, do you love me more than man? He's pointing around. Do you love right. me more than the respect of these men with you? Oh, yeah, yeah. He said it again. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said it again. And then he, it finally took, it, it took the third time to tell uh, uh, Peter, this, before it started to register, I'm not getting what he's saying. And he had to, then he was grieved in the spirit. 
And he said, wait a minute here. Something, he's, 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 he's telling me something, but I'm not picking up what he's putting down. I'm not picking up what the master is putting down. I, I got I, I to gotta, I gotta refocus and realize, uh-oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad place here. Listen to this. Truly, truly, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou gird thyself and walked whether thou would. You seen there? He did his own thing. Our vernacular today, I would say, he, he did his own thing. He went his own way. He, he did what he wanted to do in his youth. When he was young, yeah. he did exactly what he wanted to do. And he had respect of man, and he, and he did his thing. All That's right. like all of us when we were young. Hallelujah. We were worried with what the world thought of us. But by the time we became 50, we realized the world wasn't thinking about us at all. It doesn't care if you got saved. It doesn't care if you go here. You know what? They're going to do their thing, and you're going to do yours. And you're going to have respect of persons, and God's not going to respect you. I'm telling you, it's not going to work when you have respect of persons. Go to, go to um, um, James. You go to James. I'll give you the chapter. If we, we got time at the end, we'll turn there. James chapter 2. To have respect of persons is not good. It says, but if ye have respect of persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. You are guilty. And God is saying, I'm not pleased. That spirit has got to be crucified with Christ. That spirit of respect of persons needs to die. That's the old man. That ain't going to the glory, I'm telling you. And I'm not, I'm not taking it back. It's exactly what it says. It's exactly what it means. Truly, truly, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou gird thyself and walk whether thou would. But when thou shall be old. Here's the converted Peter now. Here's the one that is yeah. sold out to God and does everything that he says. Hallelujah. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thou whether thou would not. Right. This he spake, right. signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Follow me. Like, whatever it costs, for me? whatever situation comes up, you follow me. Hallelujah. And I, you, you, you're going to have, you're going to have salvation. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You're going to have, you, we got, we got to forget what man says. Put it off to the side. You can't do this mm -hmm. through the law of Moses or you'll become bitter. You'll become yeah. a Pharisee. You'll become, <laughs> you'll become judgmental mm -hmm. it doesn't work it come we come through grace we come through god's love and, mm -hmm. and nurturing his beckoning to us god's grace is also his ability to work out that nature that that godly yeah. nature in our heart we are going to be partakers of the divine spirit hallelujah the the divine nature peter said in in, in in one of one of his books uh, the book of Peter oh, says yeah, we're going to be partakers right. of the Good divine yeah, nature. How and at that certain. point, Peter was, the he was walking day. with God now. You want to walk with God. You want God in your heart and you call him he Lord because he has dominion down. over your heart. Yeah, so Hallelujah. So and you do like those things. I don't care how small they are. You do those things that please him. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Galatians. We're going to Galatians. So she just going to make herself happy. She a mess. Two. I know that's right. Galatians two. Good. Whoops. Passed right past it. We're going to start at 11. Well, you know, we don't and this is Paul now. Produce. Paul here wrote Galatians. And he's talking about a lot of people call him the man. P Peter. I like Paul personally. You know, Paul, Paul, Paul come to a place of brokenness. Paul come to a place of complete emptiness. And that's what has to happen to all of us, mm -hmm. including Peter. Peter, somewhere down the line, finally started getting it. But he wasn't here yet. Get this. This is when Peter still had oh, respect. Yeah. He still had, he wanted praise of men. He had respect of persons. Listen to this. But when Peter oh, was come okay. to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. He stood right up to Peter, eyeball to eyeball. Man to man, he said, you, listen to this, because he was to be blamed. This is how they spoke. This, here's how I would say it. You're wrong, right. brother. You are wrong to do this. Listen to this.
But before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew himself and separated himself, fearing them that were of the circumcision. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried about, was carried away with their dissimulation. Yeah. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, mm -hmm. I said unto Peter before them all, yeah, he called true. them out right in front of every one of them. Now, understand, Paul was a Pharisee. He had to get mm -hmm. over that. He had to get over the fact that he was no longer part of the good, good old oh, okay. boys club. He was now a Christian following the gospel of Christ. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, mm -hmm. live after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compel thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? This is mm -hmm. saying, you know what? You're, you're taking mm -hmm. liberty. You're taking liberty mind. now to live like a Christian. You're not doing the completeness of the law. You're not, you're not doing the animal sacrifices. You're not doing all the diverse kinds of washings. I got it right here. I'm going to show you the law. Well, what's yeah. the law? I'll show it to you. One scripture. You want to know what the law is in one scripture. I will show it to you. So you can understand what the law is. I got one scripture that will explain the law to a T. What the law is, which stood only, this is Hebrews 9 and 10, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washing and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. We're in the time of reformation. God is reforming us, okay, through his spirit, through the sacrifice on the cross. That erases the meats, drinks, divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed, forced on them. It was forced on them. Imposed means it was forced on them until the time of Reformation. Now, get this. We're no longer forced. We can choose to follow Jesus and call him Lord and have a spirit inside us, and we can do what God said willingly, or we can rebel and do our own thing. God is not going to force this on us. Back then, they were forced. Back then, they were actually stoned to death for not doing what the law said, for not doing what was contained in the law. Now, we're not stoned, but we are no longer compelled, but we are freely giving ourselves to the Lord. Hallelujah. We do this with a free will offering. It says in Romans 12. Yeah. It says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present uh -huh. your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, that we may do God's perfect will. Thank you, Jesus. So we see, I'm back in... Galatians 2, I was at 11, but when, they, but when I saw that they yeah, walked not right. uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said yeah. unto Peter before Jesus them all, if thou being a you Jew live after right the manner of the Gentiles the and not as the Jews, why compel thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? He had respect of persons. When, they, when he saw the chief priest and the, and the, and the, and the, and the he's called him the circumcision, they come out and they would not have nothing to do with the Jews, or the, the Gentiles. They still won't. But, 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 <laughs> hallelujah, Peter had respect toward them, and, and, and Paul had to stand up, and he stood right in front of them all, and including the, the circumcision. Paul was, Paul was, uh -huh. Paul was fearless. Now, now, Peter, he finally came around. He finally came around. He finally sold out, but it took him a lot, a lot of, a lot of chastising from the Lord to come okay. around to God's way of thinking. We cannot have respect of persons. We cannot have, uh, want to have the praise of man. Yeah. And, 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 not, and, 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 and consider God as nothing. That's what Saul was doing. And, and, and to a lesser right. extent, <laughs> that was what Peter, uh, uh, um, Peter right, was yeah. doing here. He, he, he wanted to have respect. He wanted okay. to have fellowship with the circumcision. 
his okay. his um doctrine was with the Very circumcision, true. like Peter's uh, Paul was with the uh, uncircumcision or the Gentiles. So they had two different ministries, but the one had to cross over and tell the to the to the brother, you're you're not walking up rightly, you're not you're not a good example. We got to believe what God says 100 percent of the time, and you know what? When we're bold in the our faith, mankind's going to see that boldness. And they're going to say, you know what? I think the truth is in this one. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to listen to what this brother or sister has to say. And you know what? You're not worried about the consequences. You know, oh, oh, oh they're not going to let me be part of the good old boy club no more. You know what? I never was. Hard to believe. But I never was part of the good old boy club. They didn't even want me around back when I was a sinner. There came a point when God spoke to me, and I rebelled. I walked away as a 17-year-old. I didn't want to hear that. God spoke to me in the spirit. And I, uh -uh, uh -uh. I'm, I'm not having none of that. And I went my own way, and you know what? I didn't get saved, truly saved, until I was 31 years old. A lot of misery in between there and then. A lot of misery. I finally come to a point of brokenness, of emptiness, of I can't do this my way any longer. Like the song sings, I did it my way. I, I could no longer be that man. And I came. I was broken. I was emptied. I was, I, was, I, was sh I was completely emptied of who I was. I had no hope in this world. And I finally come to God as that person. And he's still telling me to this day, listen to this. I got this just a couple days ago. When you disobey God, you give opportunity to the devil. He's speaking to me here. I'm going to point at me first, and your prayers are hindered. When I don't live and I don't do exactly what God told me to do, exactly how God told me to live, I give opportunity to my enemy, and he's going to have dominion over me, and he's going to make me look like a fool in front of a lost and dying world who I'm supposed to preach righteousness, who I'm supposed to preach holiness. i got to do exactly what God says to the letter. And you're going to tell me that's the law? I'm going to tell you, you know what? Praise him anyhow. I just know that when I do what he tells me to do, I have freedom. I have liberty. I have everything. All the promises contained in this book are mine. I can come to God in prayer and say, Lord, how is it between me and you? And he'll tell me right there and then. He'll say, we're in good standing, Mike. Keep coming this way, though. Don't, I, I can't afford to start slipping and sliding and saying this and walking this way and doing that and doing this. It will not work. It will not work. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I wrote down here, God is not partial. God's commandments are not partial. That is, show favoritism. Or God would not be just or the justifier of those that are saved. How can God be just when he's partial? And we've seen that in the Old Testament. We've seen that in the New Testament. God is the justifier of those that are saved. Where was that? That was in... Uh, I believe it was Acts. Let's turn back to Acts. That was a good place. 13. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave them, un and God gave unto them Saul the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. He gave Saul forty years. And one scripture it says that Paul, uh, uh, Saul became a new man. He had another heart. God put in the, the Holy Spirit inside of Saul, and he prophesied, and everyone was amazed at Saul. He said, "What happened? To Is he also among the prophets?" But listen. The, the spirit will not dwell in an unclean temple. The, the spirit dwells with obedient people. I'll show you that. Acts. I think it's 8. No, it's Acts 5 and 32. Acts 5 and 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And also, and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God had given to them that obey him. You see the word obey? 
and we are his witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God had given to them, that obey him. God gives the Holy Spirit to those that obey him. He's not going to put his precious spirit inside of rebellious flesh. It will not work. And you hear, I hear a lot of people preaching from the pulpit. Oh, you can sin all you want, and I got the spirit, and I've never heard from God, actually. But, you know, I know that, and, and you're sitting there thinking, yeah, I know why. Because he will not dwell in an unclean temple. It says that in, uh, in, 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 in 1 Corinthians two times. God will not dwell in an unclean temple. He wants to be the Lord of our lives. And when we obey him, we're calling him Lord. And he's calling us no longer servants. He's calling us friends. He's calling us his children. Hallelujah. And this is a process. This, this takes time to, to, to learn this word, to learn uh, uh, God's nature. So when I hear, I know that I'm hearing from God because I read his word daily. I get his daily bread. I know exactly his nature. He, the devil's not going to tell me this stuff. Hallelujah. The devil's not going to say these things and then, and then sneak off and me be fooled. There's, there's one scripture that says uh, 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 that they, they, they would fool the, 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 uh, the, uh, the false prophet. And the, and the beast will fool the very elect if it were possible. But it is not possible to fool the very elect. The very elect have the spirit of the living God. The very elect are obedient to what God said. The very elect, hallelujah, are going to obey God in spite of what man thinks of them. And I'm going to leave you, because I'm, I'm out of time, with Psalm 19, 12 through 14. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now may the good Lord richly bless all your sincere efforts that you might lead a quiet and peaceful life, that you can go out there in this lost and dying world and be a shining beacon for those who need to see something. They, 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 they've, heard, they've heard this stuff. They've heard the wind below before. They want to see somebody live something and, and proclaim the goodness of God. Hallelujah as Lord of their lives, and they, they'll come out of darkness too. In Jesus' name, amen. I found it. 